ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Sherrard Show. I'm your host, Sherrard, live on location here in Hollywood. And we have a very, very special show. I'm so excited um, because I've known this gentleman for so many years, and he is a street professor. He has so much wisdom. He's a business owner, and he's doing big things in my dear city of Chicago. And we're going to be talking to him in a moment. I'll give you his name in a second. But first, the Sherrard Show is brought to you by the New Herald's Chicken in Hollywood. Uh, you got to stop by this Harold's Chicken on 6523 Hollywood Boulevard. They got it right, ladies and gentlemen. So I'm so excited. You definitely want to stop by. If you're in town, order up. You won't be disappointed. And then also it's sponsored by Care Better, the uh, new sponsor for the Sherrard Show. Um, if you're in pain, um, if you're dealing with issues, um, this CBD will definitely cure all of your ailments, uh, even for pets. If your pet can't stop barking, or even if you um, have a pet that seemed like he's a bit down, you definitely want to do care better. And if you use the promo code 20 from Sherrard, you'll get 20% off your first order. You see the captions on your screen there, definitely do uh, care better. Now on to the show, ladies and gentlemen. Um, with all of the violence that's going on in the world, from Los Angeles to New York, it seems like Chicago oftentimes is the main city that's in the news the suspect's description. Police say he fired at approaching officers who then fired back, striking the shooter. They say he was... And as of, as, as of recently as of last week, there was some serious looting going on in downtown Chicago um, where the police officers had to issue a curfew from 8 p.m. all the way to 6 a.m. just to stop the looters from looting based upon the circumstance that happened off of the death of a young man. And tonight we're going to be talking about is Chicago going on the verge of turning into another Detroit? And how are we able to stop the violence? And I could not have a better person on the show than my friend, way back from Chicago, Mr. Oak Summers. Welcome to the show. How are you, sir? Hello. Uh, there you go. There you okay. go. Okay, Oak. Oh. It froze for a minute. All right. You well, know what? I'm, I'm so proud of you, Sherrod. I just want to say that. I appreciate that, brother. Why would you say that? You know what? Um. It's so rare that people stick to their guns, stick to their goals. You know what I'm saying? The journey of life is just that. And I, when I met Sherrod, he was he was doing the same the same thing. He's trying. He went to successfully did in L.A. He had a show in Chicago, and I went and and was in an audience, and I was like, okay. And he was like, I'm I'm going to Cali, and I'm gonna make it. And next thing you know, I've been checking him out. He made it. Um, it's only it's only bigger and better things for you, brother. I appreciate you, old man. And um, I always keep tabs of what you're doing, man. I'm proud of you as well. Uh, doing big things in Chicago, but also being able to um, give wisdom and impart wisdom. Um, first of all, oh, where did you get your wisdom from to be able to permeate and rightfully lie, divide a lot of things that people get confused on a daily basis with? Um, three things, man. Observation. Two, comprehension. Three, correlation. So correlation is an interesting one, right? Because here's the thing. I went to, I went to college and got a double major in business management and business administration, right? And what's funny is I remember calling him from college. I remember calling my brother, because you eat noodles. I live on campus, I'm eating noodles. I asked for some money, he asked me what my major is. I said business administration, he said, oh, you're gonna be a manager at Burger King, huh? And I didn't understand at the time what he meant. But um, I was like, okay, basically he was saying it was a useless degree. And, and, as, I, and as I studied the degree, I said, man, all of these things are, are pie charts and graphs of the same principles they tell you on the block. 70, 30, you know what I'm saying? Keep money for the recop. You know, they just, it's just, it's just, you know, rebranded. So I'm like, okay, I got the common sense. This, this people that can't read at a third degree level, that's rich. So I'm like, okay, this is the principles that they use. And this is how you do the paperwork for it. If you want to do it in a corporate setting. But I just always kept that natural that, that natural observation. But you know, oh, one thing that's interesting about you is that on your Facebook threads at Oak Summers at Facebook.com, you're always working to try and get people to think outside the box. But I see based upon the responses, that's an arduous task and you're so frustrated many times about it. How do you keep trying to, why, many people want to ask, why do you keep trying to do it? And what is your motivation to keep doing it? Um, my motivation is mostly because I'm bored. Um, you know, <laughs> in the, okay, here's the thing. When you really, I don't even tell people to think outside the box. I tell people to just think about natural law, right? 
natural law dictates everything. What, what people do, especially in Chicago, is they go against nature. So everything that they're raised with is confusing, and then they get older and they try to make sense out of something that didn't make sense in the first place, but now they have a belief system, but your belief system is wrong. So I'm like, yo, that don't make no sense. So you'll have something, I'll tell you something as simple as, and this will be controversial to some people, but it's simple to me. Something as simple as, you know a, you know a fruit by its seed, right? Something as simple as that. So if a person says, yo, when I say something like, yo, maybe father should have custody because it's his seed. And they'll say, but it's hers and you got different brothers and sisters. I said, but if I'm the seed, she's the soil and the same soil that has the oak also has the weeds. So the soil is, it doesn't matter what the soil does. The soil just takes whatever seeds it gets. So if you want to raise your seed, you call it raising your seed. You want to raise your seed to be fruitful, you got to do that. And a lot of people don't understand that. And that's a lot of problems that you have in liberal cities like Chicago and Detroit. And we're going to talk more about this in a minute um, on, on this topic. Now, we are broadcasting on Comcast NBC, the Rewind Network. Again, we are talking to Mr. Oak uh, Summers, the gentleman and the scholar. Now, Oak, um, do you feel that oftentimes when you're putting posts out on Facebook and people respond, they're responding more emotional than logical? Always emotional because emotions are dictated on a belief system. Okay, I don't have to like you, but I do like you. But I like you based on merit. I don't like you based on gender. I don't like you based on color. I like you based on merit. Right. If somebody if I didn't like you and somebody told me I had to like you because you black, too, that makes no sense to me. Oh, no, it doesn't. Not at all. Not, you not know, so, so those are the things that they try to say, try to tell you when you're the quote unquote minority, that you have to like other people that they call minor. You have to like, you know, what I'm saying they tell you who the, you can't assign who I like. You know what I'm saying? And the, the whole thing with that is when the world tells you, yo, the media said we need to like such and such. And I say, but I don't, I don't think I will. And people get agitated. But I'm like, this is why I won't. They're abusive to me. They call me bad names. They steal from me. I don't want to deal with them. But so you have to. So I'll say, for example, and I didn't mean to cut you off, but you're making a very uh, valid point. You know, when I was growing up, for example, um, and when I got my first car, and I would have my car and I would put my friends in, right? And as soon as they turn on the radio, they hear some Sam Cooke playing. They're like, what, man? Why you not playing no LL? Why you not playing no DJ Quick? You know, and making you feel like less than a person just because you're supposed to, in their mind, be black and listen to rap. Have you ever experienced that? Yeah, but it was it was the other way around for me. When I, when I got my car, I listened to what I wanted to listen to. When I was in other people's cars, I'm like, why do we have to listen to Spice One? Like, I don't want to listen to Spice One. You know what I'm saying? I sure don't want to listen to Three Six Mafia. I don't understand nothing these Memphis dudes talking about. Like, why can't we play something else? They're like, this is what's going on. This is what's hot. Okay, that's fine. But that's a cultural thing. You know what I'm saying? So your culture dictates your behavior, which dictates your belief system. But you don't have to belong to a culture. You can choose your culture. If you like, if you like Sam Cooke, you like Deep House. So. Deep House was a culture, the, the, the platform shoes, the Paisley shirts, the beats, it was a culture. So was grunge rock, so was a lot of stuff. But you grew out that culture. Hip hop is a culture, they call it a culture. You wear your Wu-Tang t-shirt, they're like, oh my God, he's hip hop. You can grow out of that, and you should. You get to choose your culture and grow in and out of things as you, you know, as you mature and maturate into your, your adulthood. Now, now oh, let's, um, let's shift gears back to our, our, our great city of Chicago. Now, um, you were born and raised in Chicago, correct? Right? More or less, yeah. Okay. Now, um, you're right in the middle of seeing what's going on with the city, okay? Now, you've, it, was, it was going in stages. First, um, the COVID-19 was running rampant um, out th throughout Chicago. Now, it's not quite as bad as it is out here in California and even in New York. But now you have the riots um, going on that uh, just stopped uh, based upon the curfew, and then you still see the onslaught of violence because it's still nice weather in Chicago and things like that. Now, how are you able to uh, uh, deal with or adjust to what you see every day um, in Chicago, and how can we be able to, what are some of the solutions to fix these things? 
Overnight chaos in the streets of Chicago. Looting taking place around the city. Just woke up to a huge explosion. That's the Nordstrom. Images posted on social media showing store windows broken, intense police presence, and fires. It comes hours after police were called about a man with a gun on Sunday afternoon. Officers located an individual in the area who they say matched the suspect. Somebody else asked me that. First of all, they weren't riots. They were loots. People were stealing. It wasn't a riot. Um, totally different thing. Um, now, and I'll educate my audience on what's the difference between looting and riot. Okay. There was a riot after the incident with, uh, with George Floyd, right? National riots. People burned things. People attacked municipal buildings, whatever. What happened last week in Chicago was people looked for an excuse to burglarize <laughs> and, and rob stores. You know what I'm saying? And it was concentrated. It was some. First of all, I want to know who the loot coordinator is because the way they mobilize hundreds of people in two hours, I need people to come to my events like that. Whoever you are, DM me. I'm not even mad at you. Whoever you are, DM me, man, because I got some stuff I got going on. I want 400 people to show up for our minor events too, man. Mm -hmm. um, but that's that's what it is, man. It's however they, you know, however they do it, they just meet up and like, yo, let's let's do mischief. So, but now, um, did you were you anywhere in that vicinity when it happened? And um, what is did you have any friends or anybody that you that was out there looting? Oh, nah. you care not to mention. Nah, you know, no, nah, actually, I, actually, I don't. You know, most of my friends, you know, we all we all forty or pushing forty. The looting started at like eleven thirty at night. You know, by then everybody settled in. We missed it. We missed the loot. You know what I'm saying? If you're not on Instagram, apparently you missed it. So. Apparently it was an Instagram call to loot. I don't, I don't, I don't know. But you know, the thing that's interesting, Oak, is this, that, um, you know, me being born and raised in Chicago, um, oftentimes when you heard about violence, like in Inglewood, way back east, and Escanaba Exchange, blah, 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 you know, um, oftentimes you just feel in your mind, if I'm not over there, it's not as bad as it seems. But now when you're away from it for so many years and you hear about it, it seems worse than what it is, or is it as bad as what's being said on the news? I mean, the numbers don't lie. I, but once again, you're talking about a particular culture. So um, you're, looking at, you're looking at young, normally males, so anywhere between 16 and 25, like they don't mess with women, no matter how much they yell, we need to be protected. Nobody really messes with them in the first place. They don't mess with older guys. They figure once you turn 30s, all of a sudden, they call you big homie and old school, like old school, like dude. Like, but so I mean it's a it's it's a it's an adolescent violence problem, you know, um based on emotional stuff basically if you ask me. So 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 you, your thoughts being that you're 40 or pushing 40, it really doesn't resonate too much unless you like maybe getting caught in the crossfire or so. I mean it, it resonates, but the best way to say it is this. Um you don't know you're in a toxic relationship until you leave it. You know, I was just I was just telling a friend of mine earlier, just to make a correlation. I was telling a friend of mine earlier, I said, man, I, I watched my parent, my my parents and all my friends' parents and all my friends in relationships growing up. And all the guys looked unhappy and they kept telling me happy wife, happy life, but I never met a happy wife. And I was like, yo, I don't think love is supposed to get on your nerves like this. Um, true, very true, and 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 it's not the statement is so is misspoken. It's supposed to be happy spouse, happy house. That's what's supposed to be. But either way, I don't. But there's a there's a there's a disconnect that you don't see until you step out. Like when you talk about moving to Cali, like when I went to Cali before I went to Cali the first time, all I heard about was Crips and Bloods, and I hopped off the plane, and this was in the late '90s when I went. So the Bulls just won a six championship. I hop off with a ride in Jersey. My man picked me up from LAX. Like, are you a slob, man? Take that off. You're going to get a shot. And I'm like, wait, what? Made me go shopping and buy all tan clothes. And because that was the energy that they were giving. Um, I was like, what's a slob? But, but you know what I'm saying? Um, but now, you know, it's the same thing. When I, at around the same time, I used to go, when I went out to college, and they used to be like, I'm like, I'm from Chicago. And they're like, you from Cabrini Green? I'm like, no. 
Because Rennie Green, all they that's all they know. That's all that's being, um, you know, being perceived on television. And then that's all when they think about Chicago, they think about, you know, gangster, South Side, and all that mm -hmm. stuff. You know. Right. So, so Chicago is Chicago is what Chicago's always been. You know what I'm saying? It's just, it's just more emotional. You know what I'm saying? It's just, it's just a lot of, a lot of emo energy out here. And I tell people all the time, nothing's more dangerous than an emotional man. So you can tell these kids to be in touch with their feelings all you want, but. It, You'll get what you get. So. Okay, so what, what, now you go in there. Okay, we got to go ahead and crank it up because um, now you've, um, you've baited the hook and it's time to kind of talk about it. So I guess if you want to see your Facebook thread blow up, here we go, ladies and gentlemen. But again, we're talking to Oak Summers. Um, he's an author. He's a businessman. Um, he lives in Chicago. He's doing some big things. Also a minister. Um, and he preaches a lot of wisdom to people to help them be insightful. So I'm going to ask you a question now. This is between... Um, um, just us talking again, you know, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll take the heat. I'm glad for it. But some yeah. conversations have to be uh, spoken about. Now, for example, you know, you always hear about people say they want, you want you to keep it real. But when you come really down the street, they don't want it. They don't want the heat like they say. They only want it in, in a way that they want it. Now, my question is this to you. you um, you're a young man that uh, was raised with both parents. Your dad was always in your life, correct? Correct. Likewise, me as a man, thank God, dad was always in our life, mother and father married, et cetera, and all that. Now, do you think it's a difference between speaking to a man who had his father in his life all his life, or one of the guys that was only raised by a mother, or a single parent? What are your thoughts? I, I'll, I'll go one better than that, because I can almost even deal with a single parent dude. Um, I can't stand talking to people raised by their grandmother, but... The, the the only his the dichotomy of that is is simple. A, a boy that's raised by his father doesn't have to be his mother's husband. So you're you're observing their marriage and you're saying, I like that, I don't like that, I wouldn't go through this, and you have a, a opportunity to the day you become an adult mentally is the day you see your parents as two people who met at the club and then you just ended up here instead of seeing them as the title, mom and dad. Like one day he was my age and he swooped up on the girl, was like, yo, let me get some. And she's like, oh, now I'm pregnant. Um, so when you see it like that, you're like, okay, that's my mother, but that's his problem. That's my dad, but that's her problem. I don't have nothing to do with this. Um, you know what I'm saying? Thanks for the food. You know what I'm saying? Let me put a bag on the end of my stick. Um, the difference between that is everybody needs a man. Everybody. Everybody doesn't necessarily need a woman. Everybody needs a man. Um, now, now elaborate, elaborate on that point. Okay. Your mother's a default, right? Mom is default. You love your mom, you need your parents. You know what I'm saying? As a unit. But as far as women go, I can't think that many women that said something that made me say, yo, I'm going to look that up. Like, when you see young boys and girls, they're both trying to find a man. Girls for a relationship. Oh, can you hear me? There we go. Welcome back. There we go. Thank you. Um, everybody looks for a man for guidance, right? So whether or not it doesn't matter if you have a father or not. You still look at your gym coach. You still look at the boys four years older than you are. When you get to the age that you, you know, you don't want to listen to your dad anymore. Everybody goes from man to man to man on your journey. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter male or female. Everybody needs a man because men are supposed to be when they're emotionally in tune. They're the stable part. They're the anchor for whoever they're around. That's correct. You know? So. When you when you have both parents, you get that. If you only have a mother, you still get that because you seek that. You seek it from your your friends' parents. You seek it from the, the guys in high school a little bit older than you. You seek it from street gangs, wherever you're going to get it from. You seek it somewhere. Um, so that's not the problem. The problem is, to me, like the ones raised by their grandparents because they're always oversheltered. You know, they never can grasp the fact that their mama is somebody busser, 
You know what I'm saying? It's, it's you know, I have, a, I have friends, several friends raised by their grandparents, and it's always, I'm not talking about the ones whose parents died, you know, those, that's tragic, but I mean the ones who, parents alive. Well, you know what, I'm, I'm going to go back and say this. A few days ago, I was talking to another friend of mine. He comes to my house. He says, um, he says, when, when your auntie says she going to the store for some milk, she'll be back in an hour. How long does that mean? <laughs> Two days. I saw what you said. Four days. I saw that both. <laughs> <laughs> Two days. He's like, man, five days. I, so, you know what I'm saying? In the, in the interim, you still got to eat. You know what I'm saying? So you learn how to take care of yourself. You learn how to, to network with other people so you can have friends, things of that nature. Yeah, and, and, and it's very true. Oh, and the thing is that, um, you know, being a man, um, the stakes are higher because there are certain things that you can get away, that a, that a woman can get away with that you cannot and you shouldn't want to. I remember a um, long time ago, my dad used to always say this, you know, um, when we used to go grocery shopping as a family, um, a lot of times my mom would put too much in the basket. And, you know, when we about to get to the checkout, it will be way over what the budget was. And she just laughed at it. But he told me a long time ago, you know, Women can laugh at that stuff, but as a man, it'll look terrible if you get to the line, checkout line, and you don't have enough to pay for your own groceries. So it's just a fact. It's, it's certain things that it look bad on a bad look for a man that for women, it doesn't, and vice versa. But mm, I agree, but here's the thing. That's why they're toddlers. Once, I used to be upset. This is a true story. True story. I spent my whole first 30 years of my life frolicking carefree dating traveling taking like little i call them work vacations like i i want to move somewhere like and i just find a job there and work at a temp service for like three weeks so i could just hang out and pay for the hotel and I, I did that a lot of places i used to all the time i was i didn't have kids i'm not married i was like the, the highlander i'm just going around place to place enjoying the nation um at 30 years old my dad comes to me, he says, man, son, we getting older, you getting older, we want some grandkids. I was like, oh, you just want me to have unprotected sex? I could do that for you, Pop, no problem. He said, no, no, no. I want you to, you know, get married and, you know, start a family of your own. And I said, all right, Pop, I'm going to look into it. So for the first time in my life, I actually listened to women. It was like needles in my brain, bro. Like, I was like, I, this is the dumbest stuff I've ever, like, people go through this every day? Like, you know what I'm saying? I couldn't do it because at that time, at 30, 32 years old, I'm thinking that just because they're my age, they're adults. You know. So I was frustrated a long time. I was having communication barriers a long time, which is crazy because I dated literally thousands of women. I mean, I slept with thousands, but I dated thousands of women over the course of my life, different places, different spaces. You know how it goes when you go out of town. I'm from Chicago. You from Chicago? Oh my God. You know, so I'm, I'm enjoying life. And then all of a sudden, but I used to put the phone down. Like when I meet somebody, we had our first conversation. I would always put the phone down, put it on mute and live my life because I already knew they had the conversation. You want to talk about your childhood, right? You know what I'm saying? What you want to be when you grow up? You know. But now, Oak, um, so my thinking to you, or my question. We're in a bad spot. Um, okay, so there we go. How was that? Hold on. All right, I'm with you. Hold on one second. Let me make it, my connection stronger. One second. All right, again, ladies and gentlemen, we are speaking to um, Mr. Oak Summers, uh, Chi Town native, about his life, his experiences as well, and then also putting um, Chicago back together. Now, Oak, um, there's a word that you often use. If anybody goes to your Facebook page, they see this word that you just mentioned called toddler. Now, toddler, definition of a toddler is typically once a, a child comes from being just a little baby, they move into being a toddler, all the way to probably about the age of seven. So. What is it now? You use that reference when you speak about adults acting like kids. Tell us a little bit about that word toddler. That's that's what it came down to. It came down to me listening to who I thought were adults and trying to have adult conversations. And one day I was sitting in a um I was sitting in my kitchen 
with um my cousin's stepdaughter or whatever. She was about 11 at the time. And she says, she was clipping, I'll tell you exactly how the conversation went. She was clipping her nails. She had about one, one inch nails, one and a half inch nails, real nails. She's clipping off her nails to put on press on nails, the exact same length as the nails she's clipping. And I'm confused. So I'm like, um, why? Like, what? what's the rush? Oh, you just, oh, you don't know, this is what they're doing out here, this and this and this. And then we start having a conversation, and she's saying all this little goofy SJW stuff. And then maybe a couple hours later, I hop on the phone with this young lady that's about 43 years old. Exact same conversation I had with this 11-year-old girl. Like, that entire energy. About, I said, man, they don't mature past puberty. Um, and then I started listening to the entitlements that they had, the, 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 the contradictions in every sentence. You know, I want a working man, but he has to have time for me. I, I want to marry my best friend, but I can't go on my friend zone and mess up the friendship. I'm like, yo, this is this is like talking to a six-year-old. Like, y'all toddlers. And when I started seeing them as toddlers, not, not expecting to have an adult interaction, made the conversations better because they don't have to be serious because you have to understand this is something about toddlers. They suffer no consequences for their acts. So right when you were talking about being a man is to always have, as I was telling my friend earlier, he said, man, what do you want the most out of a relationship? I said, I want the ability to punish. I said, that doesn't mean I want to punish. I just want to be able to, able to sanction you, able to put you on timeout, able to do something so you don't feel like you can do anything without repercussion. I want you to treat me like you treat your employer. You know what I'm saying? Another one of my slogans is marry your secretary. And that's because I'm tired of girls thinking they're cute and I say be ready at 8 and you're ready at 9.30. If I was your employer and you're supposed to be here at 8, you'll be rolled up at 8.06. Three write-ups and you fired. Treat me with the same respect you treat your employer because you're really disrespecting me. And the things that... Now, let me ask you a question off of that uh, being said. Now, um, have you ever been married? No. Um, do you have intentions to that? Are you still looking for the right one? I'm not looking for the right one. Anyone to fit, I just need a secretary. If I train a secretary, then you know what I'm saying? I work it out. Now, um, uh, now. I've been long relationships, but I've never gone down the aisle. Now, um, so, so, what, so what are your thoughts, Dom, when you, when you meet different young ladies um, and you tell them what your requirements or what your specifications may or may not be, do they feel that you're, uh, they're too high or, they can ascertain those. What are the, what are the thoughts when you um, communicate what you are looking for in a woman? Here's the thing. I never ask anything of a person that I wouldn't ask of myself. That's number one. Number two, I never ask anything of her that she doesn't say she's already qualified to do. So I, I don't, to answer your question is to redirect the answer. The real answer is this. I can get a woman to do my taxes for me for free as a platonic friend and say, yo, I need a hookup, man. Would you do my taxes for me? I got you later. But as soon as you interact with them, as soon as you, you intimate with them, they become absolutely useless. That's, I'm like, wait a minute. Now you can't count? Like you just did my taxes last year. Now we dating. Now you can't count? I ain't your slave. What? Like, um, um, anyway, um, now, are you planning on, now you wrote a book. Let's talk about your book for a moment now. Does your book speak about relationships or what is your book about? I got a few books. You're talking about the, uh, the, the, the self-help dating book? Correct. Okay. Um, I wrote a book maybe, oh my God, it's about 15 years ago now. It was called How to Screw in 72, right? A Man's Guide to Getting Sex in Three Days or Less. I wrote the book because I had younger cousins and, and like younger friends of my friends and all that. And they were like, yo, Oak, you just running them. Like you get it in an hour. How you doing it? I said, man, there's a system. I say women only say they individuals, none of them individuals to say a woman is an individual is to say that all dogs don't bark and all fish don't swim. All women are wired the same way. And it's only six different personality types. So when the first 30 seconds, You'll know her personality type. Like if anybody's ever had to sell a car or sell magazines, do it, do it, whatever. 
every salesman knows what angle to use. You go through your fab statement. And I asked this is in the book too. The fab statement, fab stands for features, advantages, benefits. You explain the features. If you're selling a car, this this car is a such and such. The advantages of buying for, from you, like I got in house finance or whatever. The benefits of you being able to do it with you, like you can drive off the lot today. You don't have to worry about it. Like you go through your fab statement, but you know what they're looking for within the first 30 seconds, you already can pick up the vibe. If, if you're a good salesman, you know, and oftentimes salesmen just try and push product on you, trying to get you in a red car when your favorite color is blue, and now right. you miss them. You're missing a sale, and now you turned off the customer. Exactly. Exactly. And I hate when people try to sell me when I'm not buying. And I don't do that. I'm whatever you buy. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm, when you're a salesperson, you're selling yourself. They already came for a car. You're selling you. Why do they have to buy the car from you? And not forward? So all I'm doing is selling what you're buying. I'm, I'm peeping if you want a feature, an advantage, or a benefit. And that's what I'm pressing. And we'll do that for 45 minutes, and then we'll go to the moat. So they were asking me, how could I close the sale so quick? And I was like, you know what? I have a system. I'm going to write the system down for you guys. And then I just decided to publish it as a book. So Now, where can this book be purchased, though? Um, Amazon.com or on a, on the Crusader Publishing website, which is crewpub.com, K-R-U-P-U-B. Now you always see it on the bottom of your screen. You can purchase the book. Again, uh, what's the title of the book again? How to Screw in 72. All right. And so um, you definitely want to get your self-help dating book from Oak Summers to be able to help your love life and also to educate you as well. Now, does this compete on a level of think like a man, act like a woman, think like a man? Okay, so this is how I fell out with Steve Harvey and tried to beat him up at uh at the church, right? So, um, yeah, it's happened for real. I tried to man, I I tried to catch him at what, what what's the name of Corey Brooks Church? Man, I tried to man. Anyway, what happened was when I when I when I do when I did my press releases and you list your books, um. They'll say, okay, you're, you're an author, you're doing a, a dating book, self-help book, or whatever, and there's always a referral, like, if you like this book, you'll like that book. So when I first launched, we had a nice little buzz, so we did a press release, which was basically, it says something, it was just something catchy, like the anti-Steve Harvey or something like that. You know what I'm saying? Steve Harvey saying, wait three months. I'm saying, man, don't waste your time past three days. Like, it's the, it's the, it's the dichotomy. And Amazon used to put the link. So if you bought Think Like a Man, you can get how to screw. And Steve Harvey got my press release and my links taken off. He almost had my book buried. And I was heated. And I'm like, yo, I don't care about these college degrees. I don't care about, look, I'm still a Chicago Southside dude. You playing with my money. You turn off my water, I'll turn off your lights. So I found out he was going to be at Corey Brooks Church. And I rushed him. And he rushed out the back door. And that's the end of that story. But I'm going to catch his ass. I'm going to get popular enough to be able to battle. Royal. I, this, this is what I do this for. Just to get popular enough to touch Steve Harvey. This is what I do it for. Like, man, what you need? Buy money. This is what I do it for. Buy the book for money. For Steve Harvey. But, all right. <laughs> well, you know, I'm definitely going to uh, check out your book as well. Now, also, um, one product that I did check out of yours that I really enjoy was your Nosha um, deodorant. It's some of the best deodorant that you could ever wear and it smells so good and it lasts all day, even for people who uh, may heavy perspire. What is the concept or what was the inspiration behind Nosha products? There we go. I happen to know a, a, a chemist who was wasting, you know, wasting time doing other things because he didn't really understand how dope he was. Like it's, and that's really a big problem that people don't see the value in what it is that they do. Um, and I told him I'm a paperwork whiz, so, why don't you come up with something based on what I need and we'll work it out. And we have so much more stuff now. We had a, something called football soap. I don't even know right now. We have football soap, which is basically for your feet and your, you know, your, your, your genitalia to, to keep. It's an antibacterial soap for guys because you know how jock itch is and athlete's foot. Um, we have some, we have a facial soap for guys that actually it's a facial soap, but it's also a mask for guys. So it actually moisturizes your beard and, and, and mustache, keeping on for 
two minutes, wash it off, play your pores, whatever black hairs you get from ingrown hairs. We got like we got some we got some dope stuff now, bro. And but the deodorant was the, the flagship. And the deodorant was because I couldn't use deodorant because I used to like get burns under my arms, you know, from whatever astringents they were using, alcohol, whatever. And I was like, yo, I need something that works because I don't mind sweating. I just don't want to smell. So it's not an antiperspirant because that stops sweat. You're still going to sweat, but it changes your, your pH balance. And you, don't smell. you smell like whatever fragrance of the deodorant you get. And it I, I actually also even tones your skin. So like, you know how people used to have dark dark marks under their armpits? It tones that out. It's some cool stuff, man. You know, it's it's, it's, it's dope product. And I, I had to you know, I, I put my I put my name on it, and I'm actually the brand ambassador for it. Go on, go on, uh, for you guys, go on Instagram. Uh, yeah, you going to Oak Summers with no N O S H A underscore organic, oh, and you'll see it. I do all these commercials, these dirty folks commercials. <laughs> I see the connection kind of bad. I have a lot more I wanted to talk to you about, but I don't want it to keep going in and out. But I'll say this. Um, I got a couple of things I want to ask you um, in, in regards to our, just to help our people out. Now, um, give me three ways that we can be able to fix what uh, many people believe is the unfixable um, in the city of Chicago. Tell me three ways you think that we can be able to, uh, you know, we, we talk about this every summer. Um, we always have this uh, the same old issue and same old concern. We hire fire, uh, superintendents, we fire them. You know, we say um, because there's not enough dads in a home or the money, uh, you know, South Side or whatever. But the thing is this, um, um, oh, you know, Chicago's downtown is really what's keeping it from being a Detroit. You know, the fact that there's so much money, downtown is bustling, it's beautiful, things like that. But if you destroy downtown, Chicago will become an, another Detroit. So what can we do to be able to alleviate that and solve the problem? If you're asking, a, okay. Nothing. I, here's here's the thing. Politics is the business of business. It's it's not about SJW. It's not about protest parades. Politics is the business of business. America is a corporation. That's what politics is about. If you can't put your your if you can't take your best and brightest and support them so they can handle the business of business for you. Because here's the thing, I could buy an Alderman, but they come cheap, you know what I'm saying? But I wouldn't buy one unless I wanted to do something to expand my business. Like, yo, if I put this money in your pack, can I get a permit for such and such, right? It's not because I voted for them, it's not because we both black, you know what I'm saying? It's because, I understand that you need a contribution to help my business go along. The same thing goes for the entire municipality, no matter where you are. So Chicago was a city where they pay people to stay ignorant. Horrible school systems uh, punish, they, they literally punish men to stay out the house. Um, so they knock out the nuclear, which keeps the commerce going. Cause you gotta understand this. There, you'll never find a man with more money that, that is single or married because single men, your biggest expense is dating. So if you like single, you're not dating, you say you got money, you dating, you broke. If you're married, you have money because all the things that you would outsource, now you have somebody at home to do it. You know what I'm saying? You don't have to outsource your laundry or eat out. You know what I'm saying? You can grocery shop, you can budget for your food. You know what I'm saying? Things of that nature. So, you know, you're paying for two people, you know what I'm saying? So if you, if you encourage people to only pursue relationships and you discourage the relationships to keep the commerce going, now you got a rap, you know, you got, you got the hamster wheel and nobody's talking about the business. You know what I'm saying? So the business is this. If you wanna, if you wanna fix Chicago, and you're absolutely right about that. For people who don't know, Detroit is the only city I've ever been in that the downtown is raggedy. Like, how y'all downtown messed up? Um, you go down Jefferson Street, like, what's going on here? It looks like a bandit. And and at one point, it was a very flourishing city. It was a it was 
built on manufacturing industry. And so was Chicago. So now that Chicago lost the factories, just like Detroit lost their factories, because people don't understand that a lot of Detroit, all that Ford and Chevy's work is now in Ohio, now in Kentucky. So they don't have, they don't even have a hub on that. They don't even have a monopoly on that anymore. So Chicago, uh, Detroit is messed up and Chicago can be that. Chicago is really, only, the middle of Chicago is only what, two square miles maybe? Like all the commerce that comes to Chicago, the tourist attractions, the magnificent mile, it's like two square miles that makes up most of the money for the city. You mess up the money thinking that you're fighting the power, then you're going to be back into indentured servitude. So, but you, but you can't get people out their feelings. So your, your better question was, how can you get people out their own way? How can you get people out their feelings? How can you get people to stop making permanent decisions based on temporary emotions? And I don't think that's possible in a city as liberal as Chicago. I think that they're doomed to eat itself, to be honest with you, because that's, that's the way they structure. So, Oak, you think that the um, Chicago is, is doomed to go into a, become a Detroit, um, it's inevitable? Is that what you're saying? No, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that it's going to be a purge. But what you're asking about is the most indentured neighborhoods in, in Chicago, the most vi violent, volatile, impoverished neighborhoods, how can we save them? You're not. What they're going to do is they're going to let you keep dropping the property value, let you keep saying your baby daddy ain't nothing, let you keep raising the killer and then want strangers to stop you from, you know, being in danger of your neighbor's child. They're going to let you keep doing that and then they're going to move your Section 8 voucher to the suburbs and they're just going to regentrify the neighborhood and you're going to cry and do more protest parades. I don't care about your parades. You know what I'm saying? What you should have been doing is setting up an economic hub with business owners who understood the business of business and you'd have been all right. So, I mean, Chicago is going to be what it is because it's, they've already set it up and because people really don't care. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's an emotional response. As a, as a man interacting with a man is different than a woman interacting with a man, right? Correct. If I interact with you and you say something that I don't like, I'll be like, man, all right, whatever, go ahead. If I am a woman and you say something I don't like, I may hit you. Mm -hmm. No emotional control. And, and expect you not to hit me back. Yeah, right. So when you have a city like Chicago where the most, the most uh, impoverished neighborhoods are matriarchies, you have that same thing. I'm going to tear up my stuff. I'm going to tear up your stuff. And you ain't going to do nothing to me. Because if it's not an immediate response, they don't get it. So you can't, you can't change the, um, the, you can't change that. There's, there's no way that you can say, man, stop being a liberal city. Quit being so emotional. Quit making these boys emotional because nothing's more dangerous than an emotional man. Oh my goodness. That's terrible. Now, now, oh, you know, the thing is, um, you, you speak so much wisdom, you have so much that you can offer. Um, and I hope and pray you continue to be the voice of Chicago in a, in a direct way, especially on Facebook, because um, it's very commendable, you know, in this today's society, um, speaking the truth, it seems like it's something that is a taboo. It seems like people, um, well, it's not it seems, it, it's the fact that, you know, people want you to tell them the truth but they still want you to lie to them as well. And there's something wrong with that, you know, but I like how you still stand your ground and really want to tell them what it is, no matter yeah. how much heat you get. Yeah. Nobody, cares. nobody cares, bro. Let me tell you something. Nobody cares. Love and hate is the same emotion. I could say you're beautiful, or I could say, yo, better get in the car. Either way, whether you're mad at me or happy to see me, I just have to evoke an emotion. It's the same thing to me either way. Cause it's the same thing to you, you know what I'm saying? Same endorphins. The only thing that that stops people is apathy. So as long as people mad, they still care. The nobody is ever mad. People just don't like mirrors. You know what I'm saying? Like I give you a perfect example. If they say, "Man, oh, why don't you date?" I'm like, "Man, y'all girls is crazy." I won't date, because honestly, I plan on relocating to Oklahoma. I mean, it's literally called the home of Oak. I think it's made for me. But they're like, why don't you date? I'm like, I ain't date no Chicago chicks. I'm like, man, I, I like my freedom. I ain't that bad. You need to find a girl. I'm like, all right, where your girl's at? 
I don't mess with girls like that because they messy. So why would I want to mess with your girls? You know what I'm saying? Like, so you know it's not right for you, but you want to make it right for me? You know what I'm saying? That makes no sense. So that's all it really is, is people don't want to, especially toddlers. Toddlers put their feet in every shoe. I've never seen a person whose shoe, shoe size goes from one to 20. Like, no matter what you say, they say, yo, I'm not part of that, but I am part of that, and you can't say nothing. It's, it's, it's a... It's it's tripolar. It's 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 a weird thing. It's it's the child that 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 gets abused and robbed by his. I see this all the time. I see this all the time. Boys raised by single moms. He tried to save some money. She take the money. It's like the beginning of the movie uh, Antoine Fisher. I've seen that that play out a lot of times. You know what I'm saying? And then he finally gets to a situation. And I know I can recognize those dudes. Those are the dudes when I was in college on break time, they never wanted to go home. They're like, I'm just staying on campus. You know what I'm saying? The guys who went to the service and now they live in Hawaii, they're like, man, I ain't coming back. Ain't nothing for me there. So you know they went, but if they talk about the trauma they suffered through their childhood, person will tell them, you only got one mama. Like, you can't even, you can't even address your personal issue because everybody else will attach themselves to your personal situation, which makes me say, well, all y'all like that. Ain't no unicorns, because if you're talking about something that I'm not part of, my name been and I ain't in it. So you including yourself, you must be that. So why would I want to be part of that? You, you know what I mean? Well, so I, I, get, yeah. I, definitely, I definitely get people, the point in terms of what you're speaking of. Yeah. Um, people not mad at me, they're just mad at them, man. They ain't mad at me, they just mad at themselves. They just need it, they just need to focus. So, so I'm gonna leave you with a, a final question now, first of all, um, um, this thing, this thing, um, about, his life, his experiences, his dating experiences, as well as ways to be able to uh, look to give Chicago some kind of hope. Um, again, we are broadcasting on Comcast, NBC, um, the Rewind Network. Um, um, oh, for those, I did mention a couple times in the broadcast, but what is your Facebook or social media so your fans can be able to keep up with you? I got fans. Facebook, Oak Summers, uh, IG, Oak Summers, Twitter, Oak Summers, YouTube, Oak Summers. I'm Oak Summers, man. You know how hard I fought to be Oak? Man, I, I ain't want to be Edna's grandson, Shereen, little brother, Steve Boy. I ain't want to be Shorty. Call me Oak. I, I did a lot of stuff to be Oak, so now I'm Oak everywhere I go. But I want to I wanna, I wanna say this, though, man. I want to I wanna, uh, plug one thing. Mm -hmm. um, or two things, actually. One, um, look out for the two events we'll be doing, man. We started a, a professional coin pitching league. So if y'all are from Chicago, y'all ever pitched pennies before, you having a pro league, it's going to be awesome. Check out my page on IG, whatever, you know what I'm saying, for info on, on dates for that. We starting in Chicago at uh at R River Oaks Mall, and we're going we gonna to hit 10, 10 cities, you know what I'm saying, as far as West Coast to East Coast. Pitching pennies, um, that's classic. Go ahead. And in a second, oh man, it's dope the way we the way we morphed the game. I mean, basketball started off just throwing a medicine ball in a, in a peach basket. The way we morphed it, man, it's so awesome. Y'all check it out. Um, the second thing is we going on a tolerology, a tribal tolerology tour, man. So keep your eyes out for that. Because what I want to do is this. Um, I want to teach people how to to go back to natural law. Once you go back to natural law, life is easy. Life is easy. Life is only hard when you're confused because the things you were taught doesn't match the experiences that you have, which they would if you would just follow it, you know, natural law. You know what I'm saying? People have to teach you how not to do things that came natural. So, you know what I'm saying? We're going to have this deprogram tour. So check out for that. And if y'all really want to help a brother, send me some money on Cash App. Oak Summers. You know what I'm saying? Now, but, now, uh, yeah. now, I definitely want some more of your product. Definitely send it out to me. Um, once he, once I get more product of, of Oak, then you will see Sherrod Show personally endorsing it. No shit, definitely check it out. It's the greatest deodorant. You have a shampoo as well, correct? We do not. We actually we do, but I don't have any. Um, people don't. Here's the thing. Here's the thing about the difference between. And I'm gonna say this real quick. For people who run business, they understand this. For people who understand the business, here it is. I have a lot of product, but there's a lot of things that go into every product. Y'all don't understand how much work goes into the small label that you guys get, especially if it has a barcode on it. So it's a lot of things that we have in the work 
that I just can't drop yet because we, you know, so, so we, much we stuff say it's coming soon. Um, and definitely, um, yeah. just go on our website um to be able to purchase some of these products. Um, Oak, I want to thank you for being a guest on the show. Um, I really appreciate having you out, spreading some of your wisdom. I don't know if you know, but this is a real treat to have Mr. Oak Summers all the way from Chicago to be on the show. If it wasn't for the COVID-19, he'd be sitting in the studio here in Hollywood as well. I have to make it out there, bro. Yes. Hold on. And shout out to the Harold's Chicken that sponsored your show. You just don't know how shocked I was that here was a Harold's Chicken out of it. Shout out to Harold's Chicken. I appreciate that, man. They got it right, Harold, just to let you know. Chastity has brought the house down in Harold's Chicken, so definitely check it out whenever you're in Hollywood. It's the one and only in, this, in all of uh, California, not just Southern California. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this does conclude our show. I hope you uh, definitely enjoyed the broadcast today with Mr. Oak Summers. You can definitely see it again um, on Comcast NBC, the Rewind Network. Um, check your local listings so you can be able to see the uh, inside of Mr. Oak Summers. And then, ladies and gentlemen, um, our next week's episode, we do have a very, very special guest. You don't want to miss it. I'm Gerard. Hope you have a enjoy the rest of your day.